appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure you already noticed there's coffee, tea, and some goodies in the back. Please make sure you feel free to go ahead and grab those. My name is Jessica Wrench, and I'm the Education and Resource Coordinator at the Cuba County Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to welcome you to this year's Leadership Cuba project presentation. Um, Leadership Cuba is a program of the Cuba County Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to make sure that I thank New Core Steel for being our program sponsor again this year. They've always been very grateful. We've been very grateful to New Core for the way that they support our community and this program. I also want to acknowledge the organizations and foundations that make it possible for some of our class members to participate. They're actually on the back of your program today, and the Allen Foundation, the Cuba County Chamber of Commerce Foundation, uh, the Tour Cuba Convention and Visitor Bureau, Fred L. Emerson Foundation, the Next Cafe Foundation, the Kiwanis Club, and the Rotary Club. So in Leadership Huga, the class is challenged to expand their knowledge about many systems and organizations that operate in the community. And this year, at our orientation retreat, we really asked each group to dig down and decide what was most important to them and to see what kind of uh, problems or issues they see in the community and how they could help. So today you're going to be seeing their solutions, their ideas to the things that they've seen in the community that need to be addressed. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up the history's hometown actor. We are the blue team, hashtag best blue team ever. <laughs> Before I get started, I need your help. Everybody, please close your eyes just for a second. I want to ask a question, and if you will, answer it to the best of your knowledge, most efficiently as you can, but as quickly as you can. Pretend that I am not from this area, I need directions, so I come to you and ask you to point. Which way is north? North is around about, uh, north is not up. You can't pour towards the ceiling. <laughs> Open your eyes. We're close enough. North is about this way. <laughs> if, yeah, if some of you kind of went like this, it's, a few went like that. Don't worry. Uh, you're in good company. Not everybody quite knows that uh, answer to the question. Christopher Columbus didn't. That, that's how we are standing right here today. Ask that very same question. And actually, he used a form of navigation um, at that time called the dead reckoning, which is where on the left here, you would take a very known area, you put a pin there, and you would measure how much distance you traveled over a day, and would take a very rough scale of a compass to try to figure out the direction you were going, and that's where you ended up. And the next day do the same, so on and so on. And as you can imagine, it's pretty easy. You could, you could get off. That was actually the thought process for several years until finally somebody created a thing that we call the sextant. And that was something that you measured the moon, you measured the stars, you measured the sun, trying to keep a more consistent heading. The problem with this technology is that it relied heavily on using a type of um, measuring tool for time that measured the sunrise and sunset and compared it to the longitudinal line. And sometimes the best clocks were plus or minus 10 minutes, so depending on how far you're traveling, you could be off up to 150 miles. That's close enough, right? <laughs> this is what they use. I bring that up because a couple weeks ago, um, I was able to take a couple days off and I took the kids and my wife to Boston, Massachusetts for a Red Sox game. I'm a Red Sox fan, Red Sox Nation. <laughs> Yankee fans, sorry. Um, <laughs> But while we were there, we had some time to kill. So I took the kids to the Boston Tea Party Museum. If you haven't had a chance to go, I highly encourage it. It's interactive. The kids have a great time learning about history and basically through treason is what you do. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these things were on there and the kids had questions about that. And I have a 13 year old and a seven year old. My seven year old, we left, got looking at the old rickety boat, looking at all these artifacts. And he asked me, he said, dad, did you have stuff like this back in your day? <laughs> <laughs> no, son. Wait a minute, today is my day. What are you talking about? It's, it, it's now. 
But it started a conversation about things that Miranda and I have that our children don't really get to enjoy right now. So Allie, my daughter, asked what a typical date night looks like for us. So I explained to her on Friday night, I would go to your mom's house and, and would pick her up. And I drove a 1993 Ford pickup. And when we would leave the house, if it was raining, Miranda would stand in the doorway. Why? Because I had to get inside my truck and lean over and then pop the door lock. <laughs> Look something like that. Now I'm gonna tell you, I, I tried to I tried to impress her. I didn't have the little black doorknob. I, I bought something that looked similar to that, kind of like a piston, trying to make it look manly. You know, I wanted to impress her. After that, we'd be going down the road, and of course we were on a date, so I needed to set the mood, so I'd pop in a mixtape. <laughs> I had some game. Anybody ever had that right there happen? That's a game killer right there. It's trying to rewind it, get a pencil, put it back in. Oh, man, nightmare. <clears throat> we would go out, we'd have fun, um, take her back home. But one year for just a gift, I bought her a light-up phone. You guys remember that? For those of you who don't know what this is, this phone actually lights up when it rings, but you could also turn off the ringers in the house, and when you would call the house, the phone would just light up so nobody else in the house knew you were calling. Again, I had some game. <laughs> so this is how Brandon and I would talk late in the evening. It worked pretty well until her mom got up one night in the bathroom and noticed there's an extension or a phone cord going from the living room <laughs> to our bedroom, and we were busted. Saturday morning, I would get up and go with my father down to the local coffee shop for breakfast. And while we were there, I would read the Arkansas Gazette. Dad would start with the news. I would start with the sports section. Big college fan. I needed to know who in the country wasn't playing that day, who got injured, try to get all my information, all my uh, sources for the week, what happened. And then when Dad moved to that, I would go back to the uh, ad section and try to find something for sale. I was working hard, saving up for a full wheeler, so people in my community really didn't have any full wheelers, but maybe somebody else across the state might have something. This was a typical Friday and Saturday for me and Brad. My daughter at this time is all confused. Why would you do all that? What connects every bit of those together today? All of those you do right here on this right now. Matter of fact, that trip I took to Boston, I'll be honest, I did 100% for my phone. So I asked the same question, we pulled out the driveway to my wife and kids, which way's north? Um, they gave me about the same answer you did. We put GPS in, we ran the other direction. <laughs> got to Boston, while we were there, got the hotels.com app, found the hotel, the rate that I liked. Um, had some time before the game, got on the Boston app itself, looked for something to do, recommended the museum for the kids. And then once I got to Fenway, actually got on StubHub and bought that ticket right there. So as you see, that app's actually absolutely played a very vital role in our trip uh, to Boston. If you go back to the my day when Brandon and I were on a date, Allie still didn't quite understand because instead of trying to unlock the door in her Nissan Rogue, we just use the Nissan app. It starts, unlocks, uh, and gets our vehicle ready before we go. Why would need a mixtape when you can have your own collection of Pandora or radio uh, devices or apps and stuff like that? Everybody who has an iPhone actually comes with your own news app already loaded in, but you can pull local news in. As far as communicating with one another, well, you get a picture. There's a variety of things. <laughs> yes. Apps are absolutely taking over uh, technology today. If you look at the amount of apps that are downloaded year after year, in, in 2017, 197 billion, with a B, were downloaded. In 2018, 207.5 billion apps were downloaded. In projection in 2021, 352.9 billion apps are projected to be downloaded. Apps are becoming a vital part of our community. When you look at the amount of time we spend in apps, the average person spends, adult, 2.3 hours a day. Obviously, as the ages progress and more responsibility, you have less time, but we're still finding over two hours to spend. Even at age 65, spending 1.6 hours on an app. My grandmother is almost 80 years old. I challenge that number because she spends more time on Facebook than my wife or kids. <laughs> Average. Average. <laughs> if you look at how we as adults get our data, where do we get our information from? About 49% of that all comes digitally, compared to TV, radio, and even 25 minutes of our information comes from print. Not to say that any of these things didn't serve its purpose or time, not to say any of these things are not important. We've just started a transition. We're 
moved from a compass more into uh, a GPS. Anybody remember TomTom? -Tom? Mm -hmm. GPS? Yeah. Right. Again, still have one, there's a couple. <laughs> Again, that's Google Maps, it's moved to an app. What about a landline? Anybody here still have a landline in their house? This is about the national average. The last 10 years, landlines have declined dramatically. So much to the point in 2016, uh, homes that have solely cell phone service over landline, uh, more homes had more cell phone than landlines in 16. And 17 and 18, that gap keeps growing even more. We spend more time on our phones and more specifically more times in apps. I'm not just talking about internet. We a lot of times associate desktops, we associate um, internet access to phones. That's not necessarily true. While the internet is still growing, while website traffic is still growing, uh, for every two times a desktop or an internet grows, an app grows three times. Two to three ratio. If you look at the amount of time, if you have a mobile friendly website, uh, you are more than likely to attract more people to that website. But if you compare the amount of time that is spent on that website versus the amount of time that is spent on an app, well, they're really not comparable. We are living in an app age, and all projections, all studies show that we'll do nothing but go more and more. So what does that mean to any of us in this room? The world right now is in a race with technology. How do we rate ourselves against other countries? Mainly through what? Math, science, all trying to achieve technology. Hugo County, though, we have some amazing things here, right? We all get to learn about them during this entire class. The relaxation, uh, the history behind Hugo County, all the activities both for tourists and for locals. So how do we marry the two together? How do you take the leverage of the things here in Hugh County and face them with the challenges of the world? What would that look like? Holly's really glad you asked that question. <laughs> yes. So we started this project um, thinking we would just provide the community with a history-based app um, that told the stories of our county's history. Um, but as we were working on it, we realized that there have already been brochures and websites um, created which do just that. So how are we going to take it a step further than just creating a history app? Um, we asked ourselves, what other tourism brochures and information-holding websites already exist um, and how can we merge it together to literally fit in the palm of your hand and isn't just another underutilized brochure that fits in your drunk drawer or leadership Cayuga binder for the rest of time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we've done so far is partner together um, six stakeholders in our community to give you the History Hometown app. Open it and you'll, you're provided with every option in the area of what to do, where to eat, where to stay, and events to go to. Um, Sam and town visiting. Um, staying here at the Hilton and I wanna see a show tonight. Um, I would tap on things to do, narrow it, narrow it down by entertainment, and I'd like it to be within walking distance. So under communities, I would select Auburn, then I get all the listings of places in Auburn, I might be able to see a show along with a short description. Um, I'm interested in Auburn Public Theater right at the bottom there. Um, so I tap on that and it would bring me to the business page. From here, I can click on the calendar uh, to see what shows are going to be on tonight. I'll visit the main website to purchase tickets or call or send an email uh, for more information. Uh, if I see more shows coming up that I'm interested in, maybe I'll add this page to my favorite. Or I'll share it with my friends. I'll go through the same simple process <coughs> uh, with other things to do, like gambling fun, health and wellness, history and culture, and summer's coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, so I could discover something new to do outdoors. There are so many different options, so I'd like to narrow it down by category. Maybe I'd like to spend some time on the water. <coughs> or spend a day hunting for local art and 
morning with the continental breakfast here, but I need somewhere out. Thank you. <laughs> I need somewhere to eat for lunch and dinner. Now, I already know I'm going to Morrow's table for dinner since everyone I've talked to here has raved about it. So I'd like to see what other options, uh, what other types of cuisine are open for lunch. <clears throat> And now, I'm in wine country, after all, so maybe I want to see wineries near me. Or breweries. At this point, I've already, done, I've already seen so many places and add them to my favorite list, so I've decided I'm coming back to do them soon. I'll need to find somewhere to stay when I do. Um, I can browse through bed and breakfast, campgrounds, hotels, inns, motels, and vacation rentals. <clears throat> While I'm planning ahead, let me check and see if there are any events going on when I'm back in town. Maybe I want to come back when there's an annual event going on. I'll add these events to my in-app calendar, and then a push notification will come up um, when the event is when the event's coming up. <laughs> um, this app isn't just for tourists. It's also for the locals that want to discover new things to do, places to eat, um, stay connected with what's going on in our community. The information has already been provided to us by these partners. It just needs easier access. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ben. Well, Aaron explained how ubiquitous mobile apps are in our life nowadays, and Holly just gave you our vision for what an app would look like for the history hometown app. So now the question is, why are we going to download it? A lot of us have 50, 60 apps on our phone. Why are we going to download this as app number 61? What value does adding this app to our phone provide for us? Well, first of all, maybe we don't need 61 apps on our phone. For example, if you go to New York City and you log on to NewYorkCity.gov, or org, I believe it is, and it will recommend 23 different apps related to the city to download. And I'm sure that when Aaron went to Boston, he probably had several app options there as well. Now, I know that Cuga County is a different animal than New York City or Boston, but even if there's four or five Cuga themed apps uh, that you have on your phone, if you can condense that down to one, I would absolutely see that as a benefit. Now with this art idea, we're not necessarily creating new content. There's a lot of great content already out there as, as, as Aaron and Holly have mentioned. There's many organizations with great brochures, informative websites, a lot of them probably even have apps of their own. What our app does is combine all of that into one place. So if there's someone coming to vacation this summer in Cuba County, or if someone has to relocate here for work, as Aaron had to do a few years ago, or maybe someone's just thinking about doing those things, they can now click one download app button and be well on the way to getting the information that they need. Now, a little bit about me. I was born and raised here in Cuba County, actually on the Aaron's testing here, let's see. <laughs> the south part of the, south part of the, city, south part of the city, over on Florence Street. And other than a brief period in my early 20s when I was adventurous after college and I went off to the West Coast, I've spent nearly my entire adult life working here in Cuga County. I worked at the Cuga County 911 Center for the past 15 years. Now working there has certainly helped me get a grasp on the physical geography of Cuga County. I know all the names of all the villages, I know where the town of Victory is and the town of Locke, but it wasn't until I took Leadership Cuga that I realized how much this county has to offer. And I'll just give just one example. We went on a bus tour back in October when it was pouring rain the whole time, but we went to a church in Moravia, uh, St. Matthew's. Yeah. Now, I'd heard of it probably. I, I we probably had a 911 call there at some point. But until I walked through the doors, I didn't know how beautiful it was. I didn't know how much history there was inside. I'm willing to wager there's a lot of people that are like me in this county. We get in our comfort zones. We 
we know the restaurants that we like, we know the places we like to go to for enjoyment. For me, it's right across the way here in Princeton City Pump. Absolutely love that place. You know, maybe there's a museum that uh, we go to with the kids once or twice a year. What this app does is it expands the scope for people like me to see all that this county has to offer. And all it's gonna take is a click of a download button. How many of you have unlimited data? Oh, wow. I feel bad. Riding this tried very much to get me on board with that, but to this point in time, I have not. I've resisted. I have five, five big necks. Now I want you to think about what you do when you do go on vacation. What do you find yourself doing a lot, even more so than you probably do the normal way? You're using your phone. You're searching for things to do. And once you find something, to do, you go to Yelp to see what the reviews are. And then once you decide on something, then you gotta get directions to it. And all of that, you know, takes data. And it's fine if you're in a hotel room with good Wi-Fi. But what if you're walking downtown or in a car or in a rural area uh, that doesn't have good data? Again, this isn't the most exciting benefit to it, but I would think you would agree that it, it is a benefit. The times that I run out of data are the times that I go on vacation. I go into what's called safe mode, and you get, you get your five gigs, and then you really can't do anything unless you get the Wi-Fi. Perfect example, I went to New York City last fall and to watch both Syracuse sports teams with the butts kicked. And if that wasn't bad enough, by the end of the month, I was out of dance. Now, one of the reasons that apps are so wildly popular now is they give the creator of the app the ability to customize the experience of their targeted audience. Just a couple of examples of how he mentioned some of the components we came up with. You know, the push notifications, the ability to sync it with uh, social media. But those are just a couple of possibilities. <coughs> Living by our imagination, we can make this app as big as we want it to be. For example, during my research for this project, I came across Granbury, Texas, a population of about 8,000. Now, in addition to all the things that Holly talked about, Granbury, Texas also offers such things as the government, a link to government information, a shopping section that gives you deals throughout the town, uh, a senior living options, even a local news board. Now, I realize one of the things we haven't really talked about here today, we mostly stayed with our vision of the app. There's a lot that goes on in the creation of an app under the hood, you know, the marketing, the, the building of it, it all costs money. So, the bigger we want it to be, in the grand of our vision, the more people are going to have to collaborate. Some of the most important members of our community are going to have to get together on this. And that's what happened in Granbury. Their local chamber of commerce, their historical society, uh, a uh, marketing group, a merchants association, they all got together to make this happen. I downloaded the app, I checked it out, I was, a very, I was very impressed with it. Now, I have no idea if I'll ever find myself anywhere near Granbury, Texas, but if I do, if say tomorrow, Granberry 911 calls me up and says, hey, come work for us, we'll double your salary. <laughs> the first thing I'll do is, how did you get say, is how did you get my number? But the second thing I'll probably do is download this app. And that's the mindset that I wanna have for Cuga County. We live, as, as these two have both said, we live in a wonderful community. It's filled with beautiful places to see, so much rich history. So many good people. If this app could just share that just a little bit more with not only people that are visiting here, but with our own citizens, then I truly believe that this app is well worth our efforts. Thank you very much. <laughs>